Welcome to Around the Empire. I'm your host, Joanne Leon. Around the Empire podcast is listener-supported independent media. Please pitch in patreon.com slash around the empire, paypal.me slash around the empire pod. Also, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash around the empire. Doug Valentine returns to the show, and we talk about the CIA, uh, foreign intelligence and liaison operations, Donald Trump, and the Jeffrey Epstein affair. Doug Valentine is an author, an investigator, a journalist, and a poet. He's the author of many books, including The Phoenix Program, America's Use of Terror in Vietnam, and The CIA as Organized Crime, How Illegal Operations Corrupt America and the World. And that book plays a particularly important role in this discussion. Doug is well known for his extensive research and interviews of numerous CIA officers, former CIA Director William Colby, and others involved in the Phoenix program. We recorded this on July 29th, 2019. Doug Valentine joins us today from Massachusetts. Hello, Doug. Thanks for coming back on the show. It's great to see you. Hi, how you doing? So today, Doug and I are going to try to navigate uh, and, and basically use the things he knows to hopefully maybe bring some perspective to some things that are going on with this Epstein situation. And in general, you know, liaison, what they call liaison operations in the intelligence community that involve multiple um, foreign intelligence, which, which actually is would be useful for understanding some of this Russia Gate spygate thing uh, going on too, and um, maybe we should start with that one, and then do Epstein second. I sent you a clip, Doug. Did you get that clip of Andrew McCarthy? Oh, I read uh, the transcript. Yes. I do not have your book to open, Andy. So I'm going to guess that in your book there are names. Names I used her before, Mifsud, Downer, Halper. Do you, we believe we'll get clarification from Mr. Barr's investigation as to how all those moving parts may have been abused by Mr. Comey? I, I think it might be overly optimistic, John, to think that we'll get all the answers we like, because I think the big pushback here, and this will come a lot from the intelligence community, I think more than from the FBI and the Justice Department, is that there was a lot of foreign intelligence service participation in the Trump investigation, I think from the uh, late part of 2015 going forward. And the intelligence community is going to fight tooth and nail not to reveal that, even if it's stuff that we should know, because they will argue that these are partnerships that are crucial to national security and that we can't uh, risk losing them or compromising them in any way. And, and, Andrew, Andrew McCarthy of the National Review Online. It was, it was insightful because he mentioned the fact that I have not read the Mueller report, so I can't say with any certainty, but I don't think that the CIA is mentioned once in the, in the report. Uh, I don't know, you know, but um, if there is a, CIA connection, I, I, it certainly hasn't been talked about, you know, and, and um, nobody seen, you know, no, as, as typically in any discussion that takes place in Congress or in the political world, the CIA doesn't get discussed. So, you know, again, I'm not, I don't know, maybe, do you know, was the CIA mentioned in the Mueller report? Um, I don't no, is it specifically in the Mueller report? Uh, I'll get an answer to that, uh, to that, but I don't have it at the moment. But overall, yeah, the FBI is mentioned a lot, but the CIA is not. However, in the news, and particularly the Republicans, uh, they they know that John Brennan. I mean, he's been all over his MSNBC appearances and in hearings. He actually was uh, questioned at least once. In the hearing, so yeah, they they are involved, and everyone knows it. McCarthy, 
is all in on the investigate the investigators part of, of Russiagate. And basically the Trump supporters are chomping at the bit. They know uh, that something was going on. They, there's been a lot of sleuthing and, you know, they want people to be held accountable. They see it as a, a coup attempt. And McCarthy is at the, while he is boosting their expectations that there will be a significant investigation, he is trying to tamp down their expectations that any information about the involvement of foreign intelligence will be revealed. He's saying that just doesn't happen. It's basically too, they're too crucial and that it would be a risk to our national security. So that's what you know, McCarthy's doing. And I think that's an example of, I was also told by someone, an ex-CIA officer, that there are like three things that you can never talk about um, once you leave the CIA. And I forget what the first two are, to be honest, but one of them is liaison operations. These are just so secret. No one must ever talk about them. So it seemed to me to be a fair assumption that McCarthy's talking about liaison operations that were involved in this Russiagate, Spygate thing. And um, we had talked, and you, you had said that maybe you could offer some insights on, you know, what these liaison operations are and why are they so secret? Okay. Um, do you want to talk about Mueller and Epstein and similarities between them and how liaison operations might be the same in both of them, or do you want me to just talk about liaison operations in general? Yeah, I only brought up Russiagate because McCarthy gave that quote, and it, it just fit yep. in well to our discussion. But I didn't want to talk about the Russiagate, Spygate thing. It, that would be too much, I think. Okay. So I think just, you know, liaison operations and what it means in general. If you see ways to bring, I think the Epstein... Yeah, I think well, there's definitely liaison operations let going me try on to there. Explain the CIA to you and where liaison operations fit within the CIA and within this whole idea of national security. Okay. And it begins, you know, the CIA was created as an anti-communist force. So the whole the whole issue. Uh, is one that begins with ideology and moves into politics, okay? The, the CIA is a political police force. It's, it's out there to uh, preserve our way of life, and which is um, represented by Jeffrey Epstein and Donald Trump. This, they are the epitome of the American way of life. They represent everything that's successful about the American way of life, okay? And both of them are, at heart, gangsters, okay? Everybody knows that Trump runs a criminal enterprise, but he, like any crime boss, is lawyered up and he has protection. And the same thing with Epstein. Epstein is lawyered up and he, for many years, had you know protection, especially down in in Florida, where his first case, you know, was written off with a plea deal. Okay, those are two things, you know. So both and Trump and Epstein, of course, were buddies. It's very important to understand that both of them are men. You know, I don't want to overstate the obvious, but in terms of Epstein. Sex rings are not organized by women and trafficking in young boys for their pleasure. They're organized by men and they involve young women with every once in a while a young boy thrown in. So we're talking about both with uh, the Russiagate and, and with Epstein, an ideology that's based in capitalism where the idea of reaching your human potential means that you can make millions of dollars and you can exploit the system. And that's what we're seeing in both situations. And what I'm saying to you is that the CIA is the secret organization of the United States based largely overseas, but also operating here, that makes it possible for individuals like Trump and Epstein to thrive. 
okay? It is not making it possible for low-level criminals in rat-infested Baltimore to thrive. Those people do not ever get out of the cycle of poverty that they are in. The organizations that offer a chance for those poor people to get out of their cycle of poverty are called communists and socialists. And these are the people that the CIA is targeted against overseas. The idea being that these are the people that are a threat to the Trumps and the Epsteins of the world. Okay. And the, the CIA, because it operates overseas, and this is very, like I said, it's not a law enforcement organization, does not break U.S. laws. All, it is a criminal, is it, criminal organization, but all the, the laws that it breaks are in foreign countries in the service of individuals like Trump and Epstein. Okay, that's the, you have to understand that there's a philosophy here, an ideolo ideology behind all these things. And of course, we can get submerged in the ideas of patriarchy, but it is the whole idea of patriarchy creates an unjust social system where men take advantage of women. And capitalism, the way it's organized in the United States, advances that unjust system so that individuals like Trump and Epstein can make billions of dollars and then exploit women as to, to whatever extent they want. Okay, and I am telling you that the CIA is in the service of these men. It's not in the service of poor people living in rat infested cities. Okay, it, and, and so it's really important to understand it because both Trumps, the Trumps of the world, and the Epsteins of the world are able to rig our judicial system with the help of the CIA. And people, if you don't understand that, it all seems like a mystery. But if you see that for the ob for obviously for what it is, which is why they also hate the idea of communism and socialism and the idea of taking away their money and their power, since you have a, a more just system, this is why they are hell bent against having those kind of reforms in our society, where you might, instead of having a Congress with only two women in it, you would have a Congress with 50 or 60 women. Well, then all this, you know, in the Senate, then all of a sudden you might have more laws and, and, a, and a greater force in law and presence of women in the military and law enforcement. So that this kind of sexual predatory man like Trump and like Epstein is no longer in power. OK, so it's our whole system that's the way it's set up that enables these things to happen. And if you try to change these things or understand these things in any other way, then you're, you're relegated to wondering, well, what is Bob Mueller going to say? Or what is, what are, what is some prosecutor going to say about Jeffrey Epstein? Okay, and you start getting down into details that don't matter because the system negates any kind of justice. It's, it's a criminal system, and capitalism itself is, you know, a criminal enterprise. People say the mafia is an outsider in our society, but that is not true. The mafia is the model for all capitalist corporate enterprises, and all corporations are necessarily totalitarian in their organizational structure which is why the, the, the bosses at the head of corporations make $30 billion a year, and the people drilling coffee at Starbucks are struggling for a minimum wage. It is a criminal structure that benefits a few at the expense of men. Okay, now, understanding all that, <laughs> I, okay, which is actually, you know, I mean, without saying that, all the rest of un trying to understand the CIA or the justice system in, Amer in America is meaningless. You're just rattling around inside terminology. 
without really understanding the basis for what's happening here. So the CIA, you know, uh, ostensibly just operates overseas to protect us from a, a communism encroaching our country. All right. Therefore, it is exempt from all the laws of the United States. What does it, you know, the, the FBI here in the United States is to protect us from foreign intelligence services, the Russian intelligence service, the um, Chinese intelligence service, uh, you know, everybody except the Israeli intelligence service. All those intelligence services are basically organized the same way. So when I tell you about how the CIA is organized, then you can also understand how the Russian intelligence service is organized, the Chinese intelligence service is organized, the Mossad is organized. They're all organized the same way. They, within their own countries, they, it, it, they are never going to be revealed. Nothing's ever going to be revealed about what they're doing because they operate for the national security of their country and whatever kind of crimes they commit overseas is justifiable. OK, the, the uh, Mossad operates in every country in the Middle East because Israel feels it's besieged. And in order to keep those people, the other states, from organizing to invade it, they have to know everything about those, for, the for, those foreign countries. So they insert agents into those foreign countries and, and they try to control political and social events inside those foreign countries to prevent them from attacking the United States. Well, this is what the CIA is doing overseas. It is conducting covert operations to change the political and social environment in every country in the world so that those countries, if they're socialists, they can destabilize them and try to court people within those countries and make them turn them into capitalists, okay? So that American corporations can invest in those countries. And once the corporations are in those countries, those corporations will be able to, through their financial influence, change not only the social nature of those countries, but the political apparatus of those countries. And we see that happening incrementally everywhere around the world. You know, we fought a war against Vietnam because it was a communist country. Now we have trade relations with Vietnam. Yeah. You know, we fought, we fought, we've been fighting against, uh, we fought against the Soviet Union and um, yeah, broke it up and it became Russia. And immediately American corporations swarmed all over Russia. And now somehow Russia's the enemy, even though they're a full-fledged capitalist country, just like the United States. The same with China. China is a full-fledged capitalist country, although it has one party system. So what is what is the difference? What's going on here? What you know, what is the CIA doing? Well, it's trying to represent the interests of guys like Trump and Epstein. And in doing that, it has to control the criminal underworld in all the countries in which it operates. Okay. It has to be it, it has in order to pave the way for corporations uh, for political change. It has to be able to influence, it has to be able to get intelligence on people, on the individuals that it wants to move in a particular direction, you know, to, to support American philosophy, American ideology, to back American corporations. And, it, and they do this in, a, in many, many ways through blackmail. You know, if you want to get a person to work for you, you got to blackmail them. And one of the best ways to do that is to film them having illicit sex with another, with, you know, if it's a married, and, you know, and again, it's the same thing in, in China, basically, as it is in Russia, as it is in Israel, as it is in the United States, it's all men. Men are running these countries. And so men are vulnerable to sexual blackmail. It's one of the ways that any country can move politicians and corporate exec, you know, executives in a foreign country is to set up honey trap operations, okay? And not only that, you know, I mean, everybody knows that in the United States, J. Edgar Hoover had a file on every politician in the United States. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you're, 
younger audience will remember J. Edgar Hoover, but he was the head of the FBI. He was a he was like against the civil rights movement, and he was against communism. And in order, you know, because those were that's what he considered the American way. So the FBI continually spied on guys like Martin Luther King and all the leaders of the the civil rights movement, and and they spied on them in order to find out if they were having extramarital affairs, and then they would tape them, and then they would use that to blackmail them so that they could sabotage the civil rights movement in the United States. And they did the same thing to communists the, the, here in the United States. They would, they would surveil them and do anything they could, find any kind of information that they could use to blackmail them so that they would not be, so that they would change their communistic views or socialistic views and adopt, well, you know, assimilate into American society. And one of the, the primary ways that J. Edgar Hoover did this was surveilling people and then dangling pretty women in front of them. And when they took the bait, then, then photographing them and taping them and then secretly using that information against them. Well, that's what the CIA does overseas. It engages in sexual blackmail in order to force people who are resistant, resistant to doing the things that, uh, uh, you know, signing a contract with a particular American corporation or voting on a particular piece of legislation in the Philippine Congress that would allow Westinghouse to come in and build a, you know, a, a nuclear reactor or something, it conducts these sexual blackmail schemes. So that necessarily it has to become with the, involved with the criminal underworld in all these countries that it's involved with, which is why I call it, you know, the organized crime branch of the United States. This is what it does. And what you, you, you know, it, it, it will try to bribe somebody initially to do its bidding. But if somebody is not going to accept the bribe, then it has to revert to this sort of secret kind of blackmail to get people to do what it wants to do. So, and also the drug business, okay? And the arms business. So now you got a guy like Donald Trump and he, and, and it's pretty well documented that he was started to, he wanted to, advance his American empire overseas in the mid 1980s. He wanted, you know, he has opened hotels in many nations around the world, in the Middle East, in India, all over the place. And he wanted to open a hotel in Russia. But at the time he was strapped for cash, okay? And let's just say theoretically that Somebody in the criminal underworld in Russia came up to Donald Trump and said, we can launder through your existing hotels enough money for you to have the cash to build a hotel here. All right. Let's say that it was drug money that they wanted him to launder through his hotels so that he have, would have enough cash to, to, you know, to build the hotels overseas and, and I think you, everybody's probably aware he, he built one hotel and golf course in Scotland using $70 million, bought it for $70 million cash, which he did not have, which is why he doesn't want anybody to see his tax returns. Okay, now, if you're following along with me, let's say that the CIA is involved with the criminal underworld in, in Russia, and they want to establish and that criminal world is doing the CIA's bidding, okay? And let's say they want to establish these oligarchs in Russia, and so they want that money, that drug money laundered, so that these criminal bosses in its employ can establish themselves in, in Russia so that Russia will move more towards the American economic and political model. Well, then they would know they would be fully aware that Donald Trump was laundering drug money. Now, Donald Trump himself doesn't even have to be totally aware that that's what's happening. It just has to happen. People give him money and he takes it because he's a, a greedy, stupid slob who if somebody's gonna offer him 
50 million dollars is not going to look too hard at where it's coming from but from that point on the cia owns donald trump okay so if you have an investigation, because it, it has used him as it uses millionaires and, and billionaires who want to do business overseas all the time to further to, to help in this idea of, of expanding American influence around the world. Well, these businessmen are always been bribing foreign governments, which is illegal. But the, if the CIA allows American businessmen to bribe foreign countries in order to to get in and do business in those countries, well, the CIA knows about it. Now the CIA owns those businesses because it knows that they have engaged in criminal activities overseas. And the CIA is aware of all this. It is where the, which Americans are involved in sex trafficking operations overseas. It's aware of which Americans are involved in laundering drug money overseas. It's America. It's aware of what Amer all all the illegal things that our Americans are doing overseas. But it is not a law enforcement organization, so it doesn't care that all these things are illegal. It only cares that it can now have a hammer on them and get them to do its bidding back here in the United States. All do you right. understand this this overall overarching way? of how the system works and how the United, and how the CIA then manages to have all this influence within the within the United States without ever actually conducting operations in the, in the United States it owns these individuals because they did dirty deeds overseas where the CIA was wiretapping them and filming them and so now it has all you know and of course it's all very rich people so it has the it has the goods on all these people, which is why the CIA is put in a bind in situations like the Epstein and the Trump cases. Why the CIA finds itself in a bind when a guy like Donald Trump finds his you know is is in trouble for having for peddling Russian influence. It doesn't. It ends up not mattering whether it's true or false. The only thing that becomes, in, and, and people here can argue it back and forth eternally, and it becomes a political battle here between the Democrats and the Republicans. Did he do it? Didn't he do it? Is there going to be an investigation? Is there going to be a counter investigation? But the whole truth is obscured and it's hidden because nobody can ever reveal this hidden, corrupt, criminal hand of the CIA and anything that's going on. So not only does the CIA have a hammer on top of Trump, on, over Trump and over Epstein, but they, like any, any informant for the police, they get a pass. They're not going to be charged with these crimes be, because they have the protection of the national security state. Because what's, a, what's more important then whether these guys, whether Trump was dealing with the Russians or whether Jeffrey Epstein was involved in, a, in sex trafficking is the national security of the United States, the preservation of the, of the right for billionaires to make billions of dollars and, and to keep uh, Baltimore uh, as a rat infested um, dump where no human being would ever go and to allow Trump to get away with dealing with the Russians. What they're what they're trying to preserve is the status quo, and that's why the that that nobody ever learns the truth about these things. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I I, I realize I, I'm giving you a big explanation for this, and I'm saying that the details and everything that everybody is involved is is disputing and trying to figure out here doesn't matter. What matters is changing the system so that this, this status quo doesn't exist. So these guys, billionaires, don't get away with what they're doing for throughout their entire lives. And so that you don't have rat infested cities anymore. And if you keep looking at these situations as did he do it or didn't he do it or is this guy bad or is that guy bad, 
you lose sight and it's a distraction. And that's and so the CIA and the FBI and everybody is perfectly happy. And this and Congress will go through with this partisan spectacle that keeps everybody's attention and everybody's eye off the ball. All right. right. So so everybody's talking about absolutely the wrong thing. What you got to be talking about is patriarchy and the, the influence that men have over women. You got to be talking about gangster capitalism and how to stop that. And if you're not talking about those things, then the rest of the billionaires are fine to watch Jeffrey Epstein goes down. Yeah, and I think, you know, that's the reason why I wanted to delve into the apparatus rather than the, you know, whatever character is out there currently. That's why I don't get too caught up in the Trump stuff or Epstein himself, all the details of his escapades and all that. I'm, I'm really looking for some more fundamental information on how this system works, and that's what you're all providing right. here. So, and that's so kind of how the, our conversation is going. In the first half of our interview, I had to present to you if you don't understand the ideological and political context in which this stuff happens, you can't understand it at all. Okay, otherwise you're talking about, uh, you know, is a road built out of asphalt or concrete? You're not talking about where the road goes. Okay, so I'm telling you where the road goes. Now I'll tell you how it's structured, okay? When the CIA was created, it had four directorates, all right, four basic parts, all right. It had an administration, all right. It had science and technology, so you can create dark guns that kill people, you know, silently and stuff like that. So you, you learn how to use LSD to, to, you know, manipulate people. Of course, administration is how to, so you can cover everything in secrecy and deal with the, the Congress. Then it had a directorate of intelligence, which is analyzing all the intelligence that it gets. And then you have the critical directorate of operations, mm -hmm. right? This is the, these are where the spies are, and this is the, the guts of the CIA, all right? That's what I'll talk to you about now, that what that, how that works. And also nowadays, uh, in the last 10 years, there's a fifth directorate digital innovations, okay? Yeah, computer, cyber, yeah. Which is, you know, like just now, the overarching important part of the CIA. They, you can shut off, now you can shut off the lights in Caracas just by pushing a button. You can sabotage the Russian economic system in a day just by pushing a button. That's how Russia is blackmailed. Okay, now it's it's really this digital innovations division really has so much power it can it can destroy a country by pushing one button. All right. In the meantime, that's the sort of nuclear option in which the context of the Cold War was fought. The United States had an atomic bomb, the Soviet Union had an atomic bomb. Nobody wanted to get into a war where they destroyed each other. So you have covert operations, and that's where the Cold War has been fought, apart from Vietnam and a couple of other, uh, you know, actual wars. And even then, nuclear weapons were never used. Anyway, so the Directorate of Operations, which is where all the criminal enterprises occur, is divided into two main parts itself. There's foreign intelligence which is known as the liaison branch, okay? And uh, it's a division and it has, you know, uh, foreign intelligence. It's the part which uses spies to collect what's called positive in intelligence. It's the area that sends, that recruits people. It's, you know, like you wanna, you wanna blackmail a politician to do your bidding. So the, you have all the politicians in a country under surveillance, all right? There's 50 people in there in, in the uh, Swiss, let's say Switzerland, 50 people in the legislature, 
the foreign intelligence branch, the liaison branch of the United States government keeps those people under surveillance, all right? And they watch them and they watch their families. And if something comes along, if one of these guys is doing something naughty, then they are there and they know that he's doing something naughty. And it, generally it's a man. So the foreign intelligence branch will then make an effort to recruit him, all right? And they draw up a plan. And uh, um, how can we meet him secretly so that nobody knows we're gonna meet him? And, and uh, uh, maybe we can talk to his wife and his wife will say, yeah, yeah, I'm mad at him. I know he's having an affair. I'll talk to him for you. So now they can they can recruit him without actually having to send an agent to talk to him. And the wife says, George, I know what you've been up to. Either you talk to this guy, you know, or we're div I'm divorced and we're taking the kids and something like that. Okay. And then after the recruitment begins and occurs, then you do the CIA's foreign intelligence branch develops what's called an operational plan. How can we use this guy to achieve our means? And these are very carefully thought out things. All right. Um, we can get him a camera. And when he has his, let's say he's on the Foreign Service Committee in the Swiss co uh, Congress. Well, we can give him a, a special camera and he can take photographs of defense documents and he can send them to us. And now we know whether the Swiss military is, you know, easing towards Russia. Maybe they want to, you know, maybe when we don't certainly don't want them to go to Russia. So, but now we know that they're trying to, so we can put influence on them. That's what the foreign intelligence branch of the CIA does. They also work, again, this is why it's called the liaison branch. They will work with the Swiss Foreign Intelligence Services. And they would say, well, we should, you know, we're gonna help you out. We have new, we have new, uh, much more sophisticated computers than you do. So if you agree to let us conduct some operations in Switzerland against Soviet agents or Russian agents or Chinese agents, we'll give you really sophisticated computers, which you can use against your political opponents here in Switzerland, and they and they'll do that. Of course, the computer will have a trap door, which will enable the CIA to glean all the information that they're. You know, they never give it away for free. You know, there's always strings attached. That's how it would work in in a Western European country. In a country like Vietnam, the Foreign Intelligence Service actually creates the entire police force for that country. It'll create, it's what used to be called nation building. It'll send in a team of people. Uh, this is what happened, for example, in Vietnam in 1954. The United States took over the South Vietnamese government to fight the communists, okay? Under cover of Michigan State University, the CIA sent in a bunch of people to organize four branches of the South Vietnamese government administration, public information, finances, and security. And, and the United States government sent the, United, the Agency for International Development over there and under cover of the Agency for International Development and Michigan State University, the CIA actually created the entire internal security apparatus for South Vietnam. They paid for it in its entirety. They hired all the policemen who would come to work for it. They would make sure that they were capitalists and anti-communists. They would give them you know, uh, psychological assessment tests to make sure that they were properly dependent on authoritarian leaders. And the CIA then adapts this foreign intelligence uh, operation to whatever country it wants to work in. In a country like South Vietnam, it actually uses it to take over the whole apparatus. In a country like Switzerland or England, which is an ally, it uses it basically to spy on the other uh, uh, on the friendly intelligence 
agency so it can get the, the secret intelligence that they're using. Okay, so it does this all around the world in every country in the world. The other branch of the, the uh, Directorate of Operations is called Covert Action. All right, and that's involved in, in what's called political and psychological warfare operations. Uh, and that's a whole other ba bag than just spying on people and, re and using them as informants and recruiting them for... Um, uh, to become agents to spy on their own government and their own people, which is what the CIA is doing through its foreign intelligence branch. It's hiring, it's blackmailing officials in that country to spy on its own country, which is what the FBI is trying to prevent the Mossad and the Russian intelligence services and the Chinese intelligence services from doing here, from hiring guys like Donald Trump from work, preventing him from working for the Russians, okay? Or a guy like Mitch McConnell. They, the, the FBI is trying to make sure that Mitch McConnell, who's married to a Chinese woman, is not actually doing the business of the Chinese government, okay? You know, so, so the, the, the- Are you the talking purpose, about knowing, knowingly, wittingly doing this or being tricked into it or- well, just just like the United, just like the CIA can use people unwittingly, or it can trick them. There's all sorts of ways of handling this stuff. You know, then you get it. Now you start getting into like what's called trade craft. You know, people can be used unwittingly. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Okay, and and they can be. You know, they and that's what's actually that's what's actually called a false flag recruitment. You convince a person that they're doing something, let's say, to help a charity. You know, uh, I have created a charitable organization. I'm the CIA. And here in the United States, I create a corporation. And let's call it the White Helmet. Okay, just for, just for hypothetical purposes well okay. good and good now, choice I though yeah understand. I, I want you to understand because that's a good point that you make that the cia creates thousands of companies and corporations here in the united states they're called proprietary companies and this is a function of its covert action division within the directorate of operations okay is to create corporations and companies that are legitimate and to send them overseas, staffed by people who are good hearted, good, you know, people interested in doing charitable things. They, they want to prevent poaching in Africa or they want to prevent good, uh, they want to bring uh, medical help to people in Pakistan, you know, and give them inoculations you know, to prevent so they don't get typhoid or diabetes. They create these non-governmental organizations, thousands of them, and they send them overseas. And one person or two people in that company of a hundred people who are doing good deeds are CIA officers under right. cover. And when they are not doing good deeds, they're arranging things, they're hiring they're recruiting people and using them for nefarious purposes. So you can tell a person in the United States, look it, we want you to bring some stuff back, you know, ivory from Africa to prove that these people are hunting rhinoceros or, you know, elephants or something. And then you can fill, the, fill those, those uh, tusks and rhino horns up with drugs and send them back to the United States. So there's just, I can't begin to tell you the millions of ways that there are of manipulating these charitable, helpful organizations, but the Covert Action Bureau of the CIA is an undercover intelligence operation, is, is an intelligence organization undercover of civic action. Yeah. It's, it, it, is, it pretends to be doing good deeds, but it's actually doing intelligence deeds. And those intelligence, could, a, a cover for doing intelligence operations, which is how people who are otherwise good people get sucked into doing the CIA's dirty deeds and they never know about it. And it's how a, a particularly greedy person who 
only sees as far as his 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 nose, like Donald Trump, can also be manipulated into helping the CIA and laundering drug money for the CIA so that he might not even know. They might tell him, look at, you know, the, this guy over here in Pakistan uh, has a whole bunch of money that he needs, you know, uh, has and, and he's willing to give it to you. And he never even knows that it's a, it's a member of the Jewish rough, rough mafia. It's a false fraud recruitment. They're, they're, they're setting you up, telling you it's one thing and it's actually another. And so dupes like Trump can become part of them. And, and a guy like Epstein, same kind of character. They're greedy. They just want to get laid. They become susceptible to the machinations and manipulations of the CIA. And like any asset of the CIA, they're expendable. And at some point when the, when the, when the, the walls start closing in, on a guy like Epstein? Well, too bad, Jerry. The well, time has come, for, just like Vito Genovese ended up going to prison. Inevitably, they can they can get rid of him. Now, Trump is the anomaly because he's the crime boss that became president. And now he runs the CIA. Yeah, let's talk about one other aspect of, of Epstein for a second. The his partner, uh, Ghislaine Maxwell, is her father was a, a a Mossad super spy, right? So it looks like, and, and she's a Brit, and it looks like you know she's in with British intelligence and Israeli intelligence, and you know the operation that they run, in in addition to being you know just doing uh, disgusting things themselves, it seems like they were the blackmail arm you know they were they had all their different places yeah. bugged and, and cameras and then you know they fed that information to whomever it sounds to me like you know that probably the cia but not just the cia so it looks like the whole blackmail operation is a it's a group project for a, for lack of a better term and a liaison operation in that sense Sure, and um, I agree with you, you know, but is that, do, does that fact, sound right? You know, I mean, you can say what it looks like, but we don't know the facts and we never will because it's protected by the national security laws. So all you can do is speculate about that stuff forever. And what I'm saying to you is I can tell you how it works. All right. Yeah, and historical I, I examples. The context in which it happens. But if you as an individual want to prevent these things from happening in the future, then you have to organize politically and socially to change this whole rotten system that allows these things to happen. That's the only way out of this. You can't, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, you can get involved with the, this anvil chorus of beating each other up day in and day out and, and get involved with the tactics of how to beat each other up. But until you change the system, until you change the basic assumptions that we're dealing with, nothing ever changes. So you got to keep focusing back on what's important, you know, because they are intelligence operations. You will never know whether it was the Mossad, whether it was the Chinese, whether it was the Russians, whether it's just the CIA, that the, the United the Congress is not going to let you know. They're not going to reveal it in a public hearing. The Justice Department is not going to reveal it in the Epstein case. You're never going to know. Get used to it. It's a mystery because it's, it's part of the intelligence world. And the only people who are going to know are those are the spies who run the business on, and on behalf and, and for the sole purpose of keeping this unequal unjust society in place that's their intention they you know they that, that's why the cia is okay with donald trump he's perpetuating the capitalist unjust racist uh, sexist society which allows all these people to thrive that's what's important <laughs> yeah i mean the the former 
CIA director was is vehemently against him. And I was never quite sure why, other than personal, his own personal, you know, situation. It was going to make him politically untenable. Un- politically untenable and i don't know if that you know takes you off the gravy train that comes with all of this trafficking and everything else i mean i don't really know why so the cia is fine with donald trump a part of it isn't but that part seems to be out of power right now and i think that's one of the big puzzles but it's well, interesting. believe me believe me when i tell you the cia is okay with donald trump I'm not making that up. I tried to explain to you that the CIA is a political police force. It's dedicated to maintaining capitalism. It's dedicated to maintaining racism. It's dedicated to maintaining maintaining sexism, even if they have a female director. She's part of that patriarchal capitalistic structure. She's getting hers. You know, and that's what the that's how they corrupt. Oh, that's why the woman who was Jeff, who the, the person that Epstein relied on was a woman to get him his, his little girls. You know, women can get corrupted by this whole system as much oh, yeah, as man. Sure. You know? But so what you gotta change is the system that allows this to happen. Okay, because anybody can corrupt be corrupted by it because they're told, like Trump always says. There's winner, there's winners and there's losers. And do you want to be a winner or do you want to be a loser? And a woman who goes to for, to work as a pimp for Jeffrey Epstein becomes a winner. You know, and anybody who goes to work for Donald Trump, as long as they sign the end, uh, non-disclosure agreement and give up their conscience, becomes a winner. And every everybody in Baltimore remains a loser. And you can't be a winner unless a wide swath of the population are losers. And that's yeah. the system that the CIA is dedicated to maintaining and everything else. Yeah, is, and I would yes. say one of the the most disturbing things about the CIA is they are the ones who pick the winners and the losers. You know, um, it's not going to change when Trump's not president anymore. The problem existed before he was the problem exists will exist after he is president, as you imply, unless the system itself is changed. Um, but they are, you know, they are definitely picking the winners and the losers. Various billionaires, various corporations, various foreign countries, you know, want to use the power of the American national security state and the it's it's whether that be our overt military or our uh, covert intelligence and things like that. I mean, they're all vying to use that power for their own benefit, right? That's, um, yeah, that that is part of the problem. Yeah, that is the, you know, a big part of the problem. Yes, once you get a hold of of power and and people have understood this since the first words were written is that you abuse it. You right. know, what's the point of having power unless you used to take what belongs to somebody who's weaker than you. You know, so what you need is a system that is overarchingly just and does not allow that to happen. But unfortunately, the people who get in power are the ones who are dedicated to injustice, which is why I tell you it's a criminal organization. Crime is people stealing from other people. What they're not telling you which is the big secret, is that it's the rich stealing from the poor and the middle class. I mean, they tell you that that crime is poor people stealing from rich people, but it's not. You know, so every one of your assumptions, not you particularly, but all, you know, every assumption on which the United States is, you know, ideology and philosophy and, and politics is based is a lie. <laughs> you know, and until people get start changing the way they think about that. None of these spectacles, the Trump spectacle, the Epstein spectacle, any kind of spectacle that you're looking at from a football game, you know, there's 32 football teams, all but one are owned by a billionaire. You know, it's bread and circus. Uh, You know, so, so all this stuff is important to understand philosophically. 
politically, strategically, how they're managed, what their what their plans and their purposes are, and how they're actually managed and and how they use, you know, how they're organized and, and uh, you know, all this stuff about the foreign liaison versus covert operations. It's all important to understand, but, you know, the object has to be to end the patriarchy, to end capitalism and create some sort of just system. That's where the focus has to be. And you're not going to ever hear anybody talk about that at the U.S. Congress or in the New York Times, or in the Washington Post. They're not going to start saying the only way out of this Mueller or Trump situation is for a more just society in which we have less income inequality. They're not going to say that because they're the ones that are benefiting from it. It's, it's you know, yeah. the outliers like us are the only ones that are saying it and we're marginalized. So yeah, you know, yeah. that is that's what's happening. And the CIA, again, just in this last minute that I have, the CIA is the force that keeps it in place. Right. Yeah. And I, I appreciate that. I mean, that's that's good advice. That's good wisdom. And that's why I come to you. The details, you have to be careful not to get too mired into it. You can't ignore them, unfortunately, because in order to come, you know, to demonstrate to people around you, to inform them and to you know help them to see how what the logical story is you need to get into some of the details but yeah you you can't go in down that i don't know you just have to man management of rabbit holes you could say <laughs> but um i i get what you're saying is what the big picture is you know don't get too it'll just be another face anyway once they pull one down it'll be a you know another one if the system doesn't change change so um anyway I appreciate your time, Doug. And uh, well, I uh, hope you're satisfied with what I said. I mean, I have a different perspective on it, you know, uh, than a lot of people. But um, that's how the that's how foreign intelligence works, and that's how it fits into the picture. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was a lifelong Democrat. It's only in recent years that I've stepped back from that. I find the partisanship to be um, toxic at the moment and not helpful to me and what I'm trying to do so you know i try to stay out of the partisan part of it but um it's hard to avoid but you know anyway i do appreciate it and uh you know thanks for the insights it's important i mean it's really important and we need to tap into people like you who have looked at this because one of the kind of most amazing things is the way things operate even with advances in technology and everything the, the underlying plans and uh, schemes all still seem to be the same as they were decades ago, or maybe 100 yeah, years ago. It never changes. It hasn't changed since Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence oh. and said all men are created equal while he had slaves. Yeah. You know, it hasn't changed. It's, there's, it's all a big covert operation. And what the rich, powerful people are doing, we don't know because they have structured the whole system to protect them from the knowledge of what their corrupt and criminal deeds are. And then they're just laughing at us, whether they're important Democrats or important Republicans, it doesn't matter. They, they, they you know, they're, this guy Guy Debord said, secrecy dominates this world. Foremost is the secret of domination. We don't know how we're dominated because there's a CIA that acts covertly, you know, and I can tell you how it's organized and how it operates, but you're still not going to know what its relationship is to Epstein and to Trump. That part you'll never know. Interesting. It's there, <laughs> you know, or the Mossad is involved with these guys, the Russians are involved with these guys, but that's the game that the rich and powerful play in an arena that's in another universe apart from the rest of us. Yeah, not the club that we're in, right? Or We're not part of that club <laughs> okay. to, to invoke Carlin. Okay, thanks so much, Doug. I'll talk All to right. you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening. Special thanks to Douglas Valentine. Follow Doug on Twitter at DougValentine77. 
and find his books and writing and archives on his website, douglasvalentine.com. Around the Empire's listener-supported independent media. Pitch in if you can at patreon.com slash aroundtheempire, paypal.me slash aroundtheempirepod. A special thanks to my longtime patrons and new patrons, contributors, everybody who's messaged me with suggestions and feedback. Every bit helps, and I really do appreciate it. It makes a difference. The audio podcast is the main focus here on Around the Empire. It has been the main focus, where we have the most traffic. There are many ways to listen to it. Find it and subscribe on your favorite mobile podcast app. Listen to it on the website, aroundtheempire.com or on patreon.com slash around the empire, or on YouTube, youtube.com slash around the empire. If you're listening to this on YouTube, hit the thumbs up to like the video. Leave me a comment. Don't forget to subscribe. We're working, still working on a new look, new kinds of content here, video streams and such, and I really would appreciate your help in building up that YouTube channel. We'll see you next time. Take care, everyone.